How's everybody doing today? This is L.A. Kendrick. I want to talk to you about a, a guy that was on YouTube. They had really, really powerful messages. That if you listen to him in his entirety, what you would get is a lot of useful information. <clears throat> a guy by the name of Kevin Samuels. Um, controversial at times with his... Uh, talking points and it's in my opinion it's only controversial if you're not willing to listen and, and see yourself in the conversation if it pertains to you and if you know anybody like that of which he was talking about of whom he spoke you would understand the message was clear you know um you know i'm a fitness trainer i'm a writer I'm a brother, I'm an uncle, I'm a goddad. And I'm a, I've been a mentor to a lot of kids, done a lot of speaking engagements and talking to the young folk. Right? So I got three goddaughters and a niece. And I always talk to those young ladies about the importance of self, right? Because I saw, and again, this don't take well it, it, this is just conversation this is just my point of view on how i've seen things and what i've experienced right so i've always tried to talk to my goddaughters and my niece and other i know a lot of women and ladies if you listen to my voice you guys know you guys know me i'm a straight shooter when you come to me about issues that you were having with men i would always talk to you about it as if i were your brother or a father or an uncle, and I will let you know you might be choosing the wrong kind of guy. Or if you have the right kind of guy. And a lot of times, you guys, you ladies wouldn't listen. You young women wouldn't listen, you know, and end up with some really, really catastrophic events that took place afterwards, right? And I always said, if I had a daughter, if I had kids, right, I would want a daughter so that I could teach her how to weed out those kind of things, those kinds of guys, make sure that she picked the right kind of man, had the right kind of attitude, and took care of herself, took care of herself first and foremost. And what I mean is when I say take care of herself, took care of herself, stay physically fit. Stay mentally sound. Act like a lady at all times. Don't take no mess. And I'm not saying be violent or get with anybody as far as, you know, trying to fight a guy or anything like that or, you know. But always tried, I would always try to teach them if I had a daughter um, how to interact with men. You know, if his pants are sagging, no, you don't want that cat. If he's got three or four different baby mamas, you don't want that cat. If he doesn't have a five-year plan, he, you don't want that cat. If he's not opening doors for you, you don't want that cat. If he's been to jail for, for dubious reasons, you don't want that cat. If he's trying to thug, what, anything on the negative, if your uncle or your goddaughter, your goddad isn't doing those things for you, that ain't what you're looking for, man. Because I remember going back, when I would go back home, because most of these kids, most of these young people now, they're like in their 20s, 25, 26, in the mid-20s. And I would always go home and get a, uh, I would rent a van, a minivan, or SUV, and just pile them all in, take them to Chuck E. Cheese's, take them to Tours of Us, and we would all sit down. And I would talk to them on the way down to where we would go and hang out and just let those kids have a great time. Because sometimes they didn't, may, they may not have had a, a father figure, right? And just let them have a good time, pick out whatever toys they want, and still always giving them that game. Um, even you know, even to this day, there are some that'll that'll some there are some that will, will give me a call that I used to work with when I was a manager, and I was a manager over the position that they were in at the time when they worked with me. Um. I was always, I was all, you know, I always try to give sound advice. 
And a lot of the parents would come up to where I was at and say, hey, man, I really appreciate that, that piece of information you gave my, my son or my daughter. But what I'm trying, my, I'm trying my best to do is to stick, stick on, stick with the ladies because I felt like, I've always felt like um, there's not a lot of accountability with a lot of women. It just is. They just, they won't, they'll go out and make that mistake or make those big mistakes, choose the wrong guy, have kids with the wrong guy, you know, all of those things that you shouldn't do, even though they, a lot of them may not have a person that's warning them or a guy that's warning them or talking to them, talking to them about what they should be looking for. But then you have those that have the guys. And again, I can say I was, I was one of those guys. And uh, what you would get is them still making that same mistake. So I would always try to talk to my niece and, like I say, my guy daughters about those things. I would tell them just what I just said a minute ago about what you're looking for. I would even tell them, if this ain't your boyfriend, you guys are just hanging, y'all go out on a date, you pay for one thing, he pay for the other thing. Ain't nothing wrong with that because at the end of the night or the end of the date, right, what you don't want is him thinking that you owe him something something at the end of the end of the night. You guys go, you go your way, he goes his way. Simple as that. Keep a positive attitude about it. Um, you know, and, and ladies, you guys know, you guys know me, you know, you've spoken with me. When I first meet you, a lot of times I would, I would say, hey, I want you as comfortable and as safe as you can possibly be. So you take your car, you pick the place we're going to meet up at. We go to dinner, wherever we go, we hang out. If that's what you wanted, I wanted to make sure that the female was safe and she felt comfortable. And uh, I would pass this on to my, my goddaughters and my niece. My, yeah, my goddaughters and my niece. And I would let them know, hey, you know, it is what it is. And Kevin, what Kevin Samuels would, he would do, he would talk about these same things. And, um, you know, we, we, when, when he would put that image back on the females, a lot of times, they would get offended, get bent out of shape, um, and get angry to the point where, it was whatever. And I'm like, okay, you called into his show. You asked for his, his advice or his opinion and he gave it to you just because you didn't like what he said. Doesn't get, doesn't negate the, the point that those were facts that he were giving you. Now I didn't agree with everything that he said. I mean, it was like maybe a few things, but again, that's just human nature. I don't agree with everything me and my, my closest friends talk about. I don't agree with, we still have a mutual understanding of what's going on around us. And, um, you know, Kevin would say, let's just take, for example, Kevin would say something like this. And you guys tell me what you think. If your mother has six different kids or five different kids or four different kids by th that many men, all, of them have, all the kids have different dads. And then the dad has the same thing on the other side, five different wives, I mean, five different, not wives, five different kids by five different women, six different kids by six different women, four different kids by four different women. He's considered the worst thing walking. He's considered a dog. He's considered a hoe. He's considered all these things, right? But when you flip it over to mom, no one wants to give her that same, um, title. I don't even think moms will look at it that way. They don't look at themselves the same way they see the dad. But this is the scary thing about it, what he was trying to make women understand. This is who you chose. This is who you chose. You chose this kind of guy. And this is the result. Because I've talked to so many women and they know the guy that they're choosing is going to be trash. Or he's going to be a dog. And I'll tell them, you know, you keep talking about these guys aren't any good. And I would tell them, you keep going to the same old dog pound expecting a pedigree. And they would just look at me and go, what? Some would get it and some wouldn't. So I would say it again. 
You keep going to the same old raggedy dog pound looking for a pedigree. Or is that really what you're looking for? Because you keep choosing the same kind of man. It's, it's really, it's really strange, you know, where we're at. And, and what I always tell them, do not teach your kid that mentality. You teach your kid a different mentality. Don't tell your daughter you're the mother and the father. You let the kid know about the choices that you made. And I'm not saying, I'm not letting the guys off the hook, but we're talking about the ladies right now. I'm not even, I'm not letting the guys off the hook because we all know it, it goes both ways. But for some reason, you highlight what men do wrong more so than you do women. It's like the accountability on the women's end of the spectrum is just non-existent, just like Sherazad Ali always says. I mean, I'm, I'm speaking on Kevin today, this morning, because it's just, it's, it's, it's sad to see him go the way that he went. Um, and again, I always preach fitness. Um, if they say he went out with a heart attack, I'm, I'm really disappointed in, in that. And I, as a, you guys always hear me speak, you always, you always hear me talk about heart attacks and fitness. And I teach that to my niece, stay fit. I teach that to my goddaughters, you know, um, we don't, me and my goddaughters and my nieces, we don't talk as much, but I, again, I remember always giving them that game. Anytime they saw me, we sat down, we talked, we laughed, we played, and I would always give them that fatherly advice, that uncle advice, and let them know, hey, never, ever think you're anything special out here, right? There's a beautiful little girl born every five, one, what, what, one to five minutes. You're nothing special, right? Until someone outside of your family loves you unconditionally and is willing to lay their life down on life down for you. When they say high value man, uh, I like to say high earning man. He may earn a lot of money. Some of these people that they're talking about, he may earn a lot of money, but he may not have value to him as far as moral, spiritual connection, um, edu you know, certain level of education. And like they always say, because men personally don't care about your your finances or your, your, your degrees and things like that. Not saying that they're not important because if that's what you do, that's what you do, but you shouldn't lead with that. And I would tell my nieces that my niece and my goddaughters that again, I feel bad sometimes because we don't talk anymore. When you try to reach out to them, you know, in their twenties, they don't, the response is different. It's almost as if to say the mothers didn't push them to continue to keep in touch with you. Cause I was there for a lot of them when situations got horrible and no matter what, I always made time. I always came by with whatever they needed, food, clothes, school supplies. It didn't matter. I was always there for those young ladies. And when I got, when I had an opportunity to talk to young guys, the young men, I say that I talk to them and give them the same game only on the reverse side in the hopes that I'm, I'm making sure that I'm doing my part. But it's kind of heartbreaking when I look around and I don't I don't uh, hear from those young ladies. And when you try to reach out and talk to them, you don't hear from them. Um, yeah, they may have their own mind, but I always say because a lot of them, a lot of my. Uh, goddaughters, dads are not in the picture. So I made sure that I was a, a, a positive black man role model that they could call up at any time and get any kind of advice from. That's what my job was. And uh, I never, ever turned my phone off. I do now. As a fitness trainer, you get up, you get, you know, you get up, you get up so early, but, and then they don't call. So you don't, you know, I, but I never ever turned my phone off or did not provide them with something that they needed when they called on me. Like I said, my niece and me used to go run. Uh, she used to, you know, stair climb with me. And I was teaching her the fundamentals on how to keep yourself physically fit, right? It's not always about looking Instagram girl, whatever stuff that's going on with them. I'm talking for your heart, for your mental health, for your spirituality, for all of those things. That's what I used to talk to my niece about and my goddaughters about. Make the right choices so you have no regrets. Always think about what you're doing. Don't say, I don't know, just because you're a girl. I tell them that all the time. You find the answer. Be valuable. Teach her how to change the oil, how to change the tire, how to uh, recognize a, a dangerous situation. Um, have self-awareness of what's going on around you. Be very respectful. Be soft-spoken. 
but don't take no mess when you ain't got to. Get away from the situation because you don't have to stand there and argue. Now, if you're cornered, make sure that you're arguing with intelligence. That's what I would always talk to my um, goddaughter and nieces about, and even young ladies that, you know, that I came up with or that I just knew. You know, I was always a gentleman opening the doors, things like that. I mean, it's even hard to open a door for ladies now, for, for, for women now. Can't use that term lady. Ladies are a whole different uh, genre of, of female. And uh, without them saying, I got it, or giving you a weird look, or not even saying thank you. But Kevin was just showing a lot of women the reflection in the mirror, and he was just saying, hey, you know, you guys may want to rethink this. Well, talk to me nicer. Nope, that doesn't work. The thing is, I've noticed, unless you catch them young, 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 and you stay in their life, because when I left, there's hundreds, maybe a thousand miles between me and my niece and my goddaughter, but I always try to keep the phone lines open. But after a while, if they're around other women who are bitter, who made those bad choices, remember a lot of these women that I'm talking about didn't have, the men were no longer around. The men were gone. They did what they did. They chose bad. The men did what they did. What they did. The, result of my, the result is either my niece or my goddaughter. And they have some resentment, I guess. Even no matter how much I might have done, you don't see them. Now, when they were like 11 and 12, all them, them young ladies were calling me 15. They were calling me all the time. All the time. We go go-kart riding. We whatever, whatever I could do, whatever piece of advice, if they're doing martial arts classes, I was there. Because I know how important that is. Young ladies need to have a strong father figure and role model so that they don't Walk outside looking like anything. My mom, I remember my dad and my mom having that talk, you know, about the about having your hair looking any kind of way when you step out and rollers in. Yeah, no, wasn't, wasn't going to happen. Same thing with the bonnets. You know, if you're going to go out looking presentable, you know, take pride in yourself. Don't have a high body count. I just talk to my, 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 I just talk to the young ladies like that all the time. I know one lady was telling me I, I need to have a seminar. And I said, it's going to be, be tough because if you can't talk to, um, if, if you guys won't listen to each other, how are you going to listen to me as a man? She said, well, I'm, I'm receiving your message very well. I said, yeah, but you might have a different mindset. And from what I've encountered, the majority of the mindsets of a lot of females is not to listen to a dude because I, I don't know. It's like you make a bad mistake and you think that, I, I don't know. Seems like a, a lot of women think that Men have to pay for it. And it's just like when, as a fitness trainer, my most difficult clients are Hispanic women and black women. This just as a fitness trainer, that those are just my toughest clients. And it is what it is. I'm not trying to single anybody out. It is what it is. And uh, I can break it down, show them the stats, do everything I can. And it's, there's, there's such major pushback. I want everybody, I want the ladies to be healthy. I want them to be, you know, strong, but you have to start early. You have to start early. I heard that my niece had put on some weight, and then I think she ended up losing 47 pounds here recently. Again, they're in there. She's in her mid-20s now, 25, 26. She's in her mid-20s now. And um, I just find it, I, I find it funny, not funny, ha-ha, but I find it funny that um, maybe she went back to her roots and she remembered what I taught her. Maybe something Uncle said stuck because, again, we don't talk. Because what Kevin was talking about, there's no accountability a lot of times with a lot of women. And he speaks on sisters in specific because, and I've seen him, I've seen white women come on this panel. He would, he would give them that same work. So I don't know where that negativity comes from as far as him just only talking to black women like that, but that's who he deals with. That's the community that he deals with for the majority when he was, when he was alive. And um, what he's talking about is they try to separate the men. They don't talk good about the men. And I'm thinking, I know for a fact, I've never done anything wrong to any of these women because these are my sisters, my uh, girls that I knew that gave me the mantle of Godfather. Um, and I'm a brother, uh, uncle, you know, I'm, I'm, and I'm son. And I've never been any of these guys drinking, smoking, drugs, none of that. Just positive always pushing for the next generation of young sisters, young girls, young boys, young black men, young black women to always stand up strong. That's that's all I've ever done. So it's really, really hurtful 
to not hear from them or not see them. And then when I have spoken with her, when we were talking, some of the negative things that I've heard, it's tough to swallow, man. It was tough to swallow. And you're thinking, wow, I, that ain't even me. What's the what's the deal? So then if they get in trouble, then they call on you. Not the young ladies, but the family members may call you or the girl may call you. And it's like, well, I don't have that rapport with that, with that kid anymore, that person anymore. That young lady is gone. She's not going to respect me. Last time we talked, there wasn't, a, there wasn't a lot of respect. You saw to it. You saw to that. You know, always speaking negative of men around them. What do you think is going to happen? Especially black men in particular. What do you think is going to happen? Especially when you talk negative about a black man who was always there and never did any wrong to those kids. That, I don't understand any of that. But I think I drugged this on too long. Um, but I just wanted to, to touch on that. Because again, Kevin, was a, he was a, a breath of fresh air and he spoke the truth. He made you have to look at yourself. He even if women, even if you don't like it, ladies, even if you don't like it, you know, you called into his show, you asked a question, he gave you a critique. How much do you weigh? What your dress size is? How many kids you have? Basic stuff. But these women would get on with these unrealistic expectations of men, but then come to the table with none of what they said, none of what they would put up with in a man. Last example I'm gonna give you. I've asked uh, I've asked women that I've talked to now and in the past, right? Again, I know a lot of women. And you, like I say, ladies, y'all know I'm y'all. You guys know me. You know me. Um, some are just really really cool people that we that we crossed over. And we still we we were just, we were just solid friends, and that's the that's a that's a huge amount. But I've always used this analogy. I've seen women in restaurants like fast food, like a Burger King. She got a nice shape. She look good. Or just cute. Guess what? You'll give that chick an opportunity. You can be a multimillionaire walk in and see her and go, man, she's nice. Man, she looking good. You don't know anything about her. All you know is she's working at a restaurant. Low end paying job. You, you see a nice body, you see a nice face. And she may be, you know, at work and uh, doing a decent job. Maybe not even doing it. Well, doing a decent job. She got to do a decent job. If she's not doing a decent job, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a turnoff for anybody making millions of dollars, right? Now flip it. And this is, this is a man. This is a black man. Now just flip it, right? How many times have you seen a multimillionaire black female walk into a McDonald's or a Burger King and see a... a, a a black man running, uh, you know, at the cash register. He may be nice looking, maybe well built, whatever. She ain't giving that cat a second thought because he's not on her financial bracket and she doesn't feel like he meets anything that, that she has. See the unfairness of all of that? See, men don't care how much money you're making. They don't care what job you have. All they care about is you, if you fit Feminine, as Kevin would say, and um, uh, cooperative. Women don't really understand that those terminologies. My niece understood it when we the way we talked. I made sure that she understood it. I don't know again her mindset now. She understood it when we used to talk. And so, um, that woman wouldn't even give that wouldn't even give that guy an opportunity. And he could be saving money. He could be working on a plan. He could have whatever. He's not going to get a shot. Nine out of 10 of the times, he's not going to get a shot. She, you know, I, funny as heck, it, she, were, she would rather deal with the dude that, that, that's slanging than that dude that, and, and banging than that dude, he, than the dude that's working behind the, the, the register at the McDonald's. He ain't got a chance. He ain't got a catch chance in hell for the most part. And again, I'm speaking from experience and, and, and what I've seen and girls that I talk to. It's not, it's not a slight. And again, it's not a slight. And these are the lessons that I want to teach my daughter if I had kids. I would love to teach that to my daughter. Uh, you know, that that is the severity. I think Floyd Mayweather even proved that point. He went, some girl he was messing with years back, if I'm not mistaken, saw at a restaurant, told her quit her job, hung out with her, don't know what happened after after all of that, but 
he took her out, had a, you know, hung out with her, had a good, whatever it was, he gave her an opportunity just because she looked good. It doesn't work like that because the woman is seeing that this guy, she, she's not even getting, get to know this cat. Like I tell my niece, get to know him. You, you can tell what you, what you're dealing with within the first five to 10 minutes when you're talking to somebody, get to know them. If they're not talking about some of the things you want to talk about, uh, then let it go. You could even try to get to know them at the register. Just get to know them. Get to know them before you do anything sensual or anything exotic or anything erotic, right? And you should be good to go. But in closing, I think we made this, like I say, too long. And again, I'm just trying to pay my respect to Kevin Samuels. That was a good dude, man. He he had some really good, solid talking points. And he made you uh, look at yourself in the mirror. And if he didn't, it wouldn't be so much uh, negative. I've seen a lot of negative stuff. And I'm not even buying into or pouring into the negativity or buying into the negativity. But the fact is, is that he talked about things that needed to be talked about and in ways that they you know, should have been talked about. And I think a lot of you know, people had an issue with it. A lot of women had an issue with it. And it's just it's unfortunate. I've seen people celebrating his death. I'm like, wow, you, OK, you're going to celebrate this man's death because he spoke the truth when you called into his show. OK, I'm, I'm lost. You don't like the message. Don't call in. You don't like the reality, don't call in. People tell people all the time, if you want the truth, don't ask L.A. Don't ask them. If you want the truth, because I'm not above anybody telling me or correcting me on things that I've done wrong. I, I like to know when I'm doing something wrong so I can improve on myself. And that's all Kevin was asking people to do. Reflect, improve on yourself, and move forward into the future. Make better choices. Make better uh, 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 decisions. Stay fit. I'm saying stay fit. And again, I think cardiac arrest killed Kevin. And um, I, I've always been a, a big proponent of staying healthy and physically fit. So you guys do the same. And in closing, yo, Kevin, this one's for you, bro. Um, yeah, positive messages. I, I agree with, with majority of you, what you said and the things I didn't agree with, just like what, what you would do with, with a friend. But I tell you what, man, you had far more positive than you ever had negative. And, in, and and I like to say, you will be missed, man. That's a voice. The conversation has been started with men, between men and women. Um, may the universe receive you well, bro.